Thank you, Ray. So I spent the past six years or so thinking about this software supply chain security space, both through my research at NYU and also through my work on open source projects, including Tuff, Sigstor, and, and Intoto, which I'm repping today. Um, so I figured I'd share with you today some of what I've learned if, um, about what's going on in this space and then my vision for a secure software supply chain and how we could all work together to achieve this vision. So to start with, why should you care about software supply chain security? In case this is the first time you've heard the term, let's get, let's get a little bit of background information. 61% of businesses were affected by a software supply chain attack in the 12 months from April 2022 to April 2023, according to a report by Gartner. So this is clearly an attack, a popular attack vector, and so something that's worth talking a little bit more about. So let's talk a little bit about what a software supply chain actually is. So the first step in preventing software supply chain of tax is, of course, understanding what they are and how they impact different systems. So a definition I like is that a software supply chain attack is any attack that occurs between when a developer writes code and when that code ends up running on a consumer's machine. This diagram here from the Salsa project um, illustrates some of the steps that can occur in a software supply chain. Every supply chain looks a little bit different. This kind of exempl like exemplifies some of the steps that could occur, and you can kind of extrapolate from there to see what this would look like for your system. And note that a compromise can happen at any stage, like the build process or the source code uh, repository could be compromised, or it could even happen between the different steps. And I'll give you a few examples from Tag Security's catalog of supply chain compromises of what these attacks actually look like in practice. So these are attacks from mostly from 2023. First of all, um, there's the, the XZ attack, um, a malicious maintainer, which I think was a very recent one. A malicious maintainer injected a backdoor into XZ, which is a compression library used by Linux distributions and, and other systems. The maintainer inserted the malware into the packaging process for certain distributions, masking the malware as a testing library. This is a very clever one. Um, another example is, is yes, here. A source code attack in which an attacker impersonated Dependabot in order to trick maintainers into merging malicious code. So Dependabot is a bot uh, maintained by GitHub that automatically submits pull requests to update project dependencies. And it's usually actually a very good tool for preventing software supply chain attacks, right? Keeping your, your dependencies up to date. But this attack actually was able to impersonate Dependabot and then um, attackers are able to get malware merged that allowed them to steal repository secrets. So this kind of shows that as, as we as defenders get better at creating tools and creating great systems for certain classes of attacks, attackers then use these you know, new tools to, to try and um, do even more clever and new attacks. And another little bit of a complicated one, my final example, is a flaw in Zoho's managed em engine that stemmed from an out-of-date vulnerable dependency on Apache Centario. And Apache Centario actually in turn had a vulnerable dependency on Apache Zalin. So, this example shows the complexity of securing the software supply chain. Software has a lot of dependencies, and each of these dependencies could have their own dependencies. And so kind of, there's a lot of different places where stuff could go wrong. So, but there's good news. Um, in the past few years, there's a lot of great progress that's been made towards securing the software supply chain. Um, I'm gonna delve into a few open source technologies that um, make up some parts of the software supply chain landscape to kind of give you an idea of some of the great work that's been done in this space. To start with, um, the Intoto project, which is a CNCF incubating project that lets, user, that, sorry, that lets users get insights into what steps have actually occurred in their software supply chain, by who, and in what order. This allows users to set policy and enforce that certain actions should be performed by specific people. For example, it can require that input to a testing step matches the, the sorry, output from the testing step matches the input to a build step, or that the build was performed by the correct machine. And so, yeah, another example I'll go into is another, force, of course, one that you've, many of you have probably heard of, which is an SBOM, or Software Bill of Material. SBOMs describe the dependencies that go into a piece of software, and there's a couple of specifications for how to capture this information. But they all allow for software producers to communicate information about what goes into software. And this and in total both form kind of important building blocks that can be used together in interesting ways, which we'll go into a little bit later. Of course, not all vulnerable dependencies actually affect upstream users. 
That's where VEX comes in, um, which I think you're going to hear a lot more about later today, so keep this one brief. Um, VEX allows projects to communicate um, whether they're vulnerable to a particular CVE, and then combined with an SBOM, this allows users to see both all the software that they're dependent on and whether they're actually impacted by the CVEs in, from that SBOM. Next, I'll talk a little bit about GWOC, or Graph for Understanding Artifact Composition, um, which aggregates software supply chain metadata. This aggregate information allows you to query the graph for data about the software supply chain and answer questions like, which dependencies in, in my supply chain are unmaintained, or am I actually impacted by a compromise somewhere in, in my supply chain? I'll talk a little, uh, the Spiffy Spire is a framework for identity that provides cryptographic identities across workloads, allowing secure communication between services. Uh, modern software applications are spread across a variety of virtual machines in public and pri private data centers, as many of you know. Spiffy allows for a uniform identity control plane across all of these machines. And finally, a project near and dear to my heart, the Update Framework, or TUF, is a framework for secure software distribution and updating. You can think of it as the last link in the software supply chain. It's designed to prevent or recover from common attacks on software distribution systems, like rollback attacks or repository compromises. Um, this mechanism for secure distribution has actually been used as a root of trust for a lot of other software supply chain systems as well, um, including, distributing root of, uh, including distributing root keys for SigStorm and, contributing, and um, distributing other supply chain policy information. So, so far, look, I kind of briefly covered a lot of individual projects um, that are doing a lot of great work in this space. But a software supply chain is a system, and like any system, it requires a holistic view to actually secure um, you know, the entirety of the system. And attackers will always look for the weakest link in, this, in the chain, in this software supply chain metaphor that I'm going to overuse in this talk. Uh, so we have to ensure that all of this great work to protect the software supply chain can fit together into our, you know, our unbroken chain. I'm going to cover a couple of examples of where these technologies have actually been used together already and kind of how we can do more of this in the future. The first example I'm going to go over is this project called Software Build Materials on Intoto, or SBOMIT, which is a specification that allows projects to generate Intoto attestations and then use them to build an SBOM with additional verification information. It does so in a way that's independent of the actual SBOM format used, so all those different specifications or SBOMs that you've heard of, you can use any of those with this. And this combines the benefits of Intoto with SBOMs. So a project can generate attestations that say what happened in the supply chain, and at the same time, use those attestations to create an SBOM that can be used to, to look at all those, those different dependencies. And so then downstream users can use both of these pieces to better understand the end product. Another example um, I want to talk about is the use of TUF to distribute Intoto layouts and attestations. So the layouts in Intoto or that policy piece that says what's supposed to happen, and the attestations are the, you know, the, the piece that says what actually happened in the, in the software, the sign pieces that say what actually happened in the software supply chain. And this collaboration between Tuf and Intoto allows Intoto attestations to be connected to the particular image using what in Tuf we call delegations. It also allows for the secure distribution of software supply chain policy through the distribution of layouts. So the verifiers know both what steps should have occurred um, in the supply chain when verifying in total metadata, and they also have the actual um, attestations themselves. So how this works is that one party is responsible for signing a particular image. In this case, the image we're talking about is Foo 1.0. The image itself is kind of in the middle of the screen. And then another party is responsible for signing the layout or policy for this image. And then by comparing the policy to the attestations for the image, a verifier can ensure not only that the trusted party uploaded the image, but that all the previous steps and all those attestations were done according to the policy or layout. And this model has actually been used in practice by a couple of companies, including Datadog and Horizon. So what's next? This is a lot of exciting work that's already been done to secure the software supply chain, some initial collaborations in the space. So we get to the vision part of the talk. Um, let's take a look at what's next for this space and where I think all of you can come in. So first, I think we need more collaboration between projects. I shared some examples that I've seen where projects have come together to focus on not just one element of the supply chain, but come together to secure more different elements together. And I think we need more of, more of these efforts in order to just finish building out this, you know, this, this secure chain 
as, as it were. Um, only by creating these seamless integrations between all the pieces can we actually secure the entire ecosystem. And another important part here is not just the generation of software supply chain metadata, but the verification piece as well. You, know, you don't only need to say, okay, this is what's happening, you know, we, we're creating these signatures, we're creating these attestations, but also connect that to the verification side so users can actually say, oh, I know who was supposed to have signed that, and I'm checking that that person has signed it consistently, and I notice when something is off, like when one person is signing a, a particular package over and over again, and then one day a different person is signing it. Even though it's a valid signature, that's still something worth thinking about. Also, I think we need more adoption of these technologies. Um, technologies and standards in the supply chain space are maturing. So it's still a pretty new field, but the technologies, I think, are getting to the point where they can, they can get broader adoption. And of course, this broader adoption can in turn lead to you know, the discovery of you know, new problems or you know, usability issues that can then contribute back to the ecosystem and make it better for everyone. And I think that this is kind of like my call to action. So if you've been waiting to, for these supply chain technologies to mature, I think now is the time to get involved and, um, and start adopting them and contributing back. Because uh, if you wait too long, then there's, there's no chance to actually provide input into how these things are secured. You're just stuck with whatever, whatever folks have built. And finally, um, as we secure the, improve the security of some aspects of the software supply chain, there will always be new li weak links to address. That's kind of what I was trying to highlight in those attacks at the beginning of the presentation, which are that um, you know, as, as we improve tooling and come up with great new solutions, um, the attackers will you know, use the work that we've done to, um, to find new attacks. And so it's just a continual process where we can all work together and get involved to keep addressing the weakest links in the supply chain until they're, they're all gone and keep improving the security. So in conclusion, um, the future is bright for software supply chain security. Um, the community has come up with lots of great solutions and they're coming together to form this impenetrable chain of supply chain technologies that allows consumers to ensure the software they're running is the intended software and you all can get involved and help us make it even better. So thank you.